Hey, everybody. Parker J is in the house. We are having another Right Stuff After Show. So excited to have my girl, Carol McDonald, here with me in the house. Carol and I have been having a great time. Yes, Carol. I'm so excited. We had such a great time on the show. And Carol and I, we were fangirling because her book, My Life as an Onion, is phenomenal. And I've, I'm not joking. I'm not making it up. Carol is a master storyteller. She is a master storyteller. And I love the way she tells stories. And My Life as an Onion is no different. Let me tell you about My Life as an Onion. If you like K-dramas, this is the book for you. And some of you may go, oh, K-drama? You know about K-dramas, Parker? Heck <laughs> yeah, I know about K-dramas. Me and Carol know about K-dramas. And get this, if you don't know anything about K-dramas, Carol can give you a recommendation, and so can I. <laughs> That's how good we are at K-dramas. So, Carol, I'm so excited to talk to you after the show. We were just fangirling for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so, real quickly, you know, some of the things we could have talked about on the show, we talked about, you know, uh, our main character in my life as an onion is Denise. And one thing that Denise has, she's very neurotic, you know, and she's very anxious. So real quickly, just tell people when they read about my life as an onion, what kind of character they can expect with Denise? Uh, she's just confused, needy, uh, trying to be strong. Um, and, and I think she's very open with certain people. And with certain people, she's very quiet and closed off. And uh, she is very good at tolerating oddballs. And she basically is very good when people tolerate her. You know, there's just that sense of like just wanting to be loved and at peace and calm. Yes, yes. And one thing about Denise is that she has the ability to be surrounded by beautiful men. And every girl wants that fantasy. And one thing that Carol mentioned in the show was that she's taking the true uh, meaning of an Asian romance um, reverse harem. It's not all it's really all sexual like they do now, yeah. but it's more so about choosing who your life path is going to be. And yeah. each path you choose with these men that are in your life is going to be a different path for you. Like, for instance, for instance, if we're just going to use an example, if I marry Soji Sa. Soji Sop, which is a huge Korean actor, my mm-hmm. life would be different, okay? And if oh. I had to choose from. So, uh, you know, we were talking about it because in my life as an onion, like I said, it's a K-drama. And so <laughs> Carol and I were talking about various K-drama actors that we liked. And so I'm going to pull up a couple of them just so you can see. And we're just going to gush and fangirl real quickly. We're going to gush and fangirl. Like, this is my favorite one here. I'm pulling up right now. This is my favorite one here. And Carol, I'm just going to, not that I don't love you, but I'm going to let him just take over the screen for a minute. <laughs> okay. So, you know, so this guy here, that's my guy. His name is Soji Sop. And Carol, I know you know about Soji Sop. So Soji Sop's my guy. What makes him so just uh, attractive as a Korean actor, in your opinion? Soji Sop? Yeah, so just stop. I just think he's got this intelligence to him. Mm-hmm. He's got this sort of like um, unflappableness. And there's just a sort of like, I guess he could be a James Bond character. There's just yes. that sort of like slick and unflappable. He definitely could be that. And I loved him in when he did Master Son. Master That's when I fell in love with him. Oh my gosh, when I fell in love with him was in the Master Son. And I hope some of you guys are taking notes because like I said, if you want to get into a K-drama, you can definitely get into one of these. So that's my guy. So I told you so unfortunately, breaking my heart, he got married this year. <laughs> so he had been single for a long time. I mean, a long time. But not single, I won't say single like he didn't have a girlfriend, but he had been unmarried for a while. So I was so disappointed when he decided to do that. (laughs) And then my other guy I chose, um, some of you may know him. The other guy I chose, his name is Gong Wu. And Gong Wu, he is a really good actor himself. I'm going to put him in in the stream in a minute. Again, Carol, it's not because I hate you. I was going to hide you for two seconds here. But Gong Wu is this actor here. 
And some of the people may know him from the K-drama Coffee Prince. And Coffee Prince came out oh, about 10, 12 years ago, something like that. And he stole the show. But what is it like? And we're, we're using these K-drama actors because we're trying to figure out who would Ben be in our book? <laughs> who would Ben be in My Life as an Onion? So talk about Gung Wu real quick. I think there's like a sort of humility to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, like he was on this show with uh, Lee Dong Wook, mm -hmm. a really good variety show. And it's called I, want, I Just Want to Talk. So mm -hmm. you can see your beauty there. And uh, there's just a, a humility and a sweetness and a giddiness. He's like, he's like Mr. Gorgeous. The Koreans just adore him. Yeah. yeah. He's like idol type. Yeah. And if you want to see a Korean drama with him in it, go pick up Goblin. Goblin is one of his more recent ones that he did. Or go see Coffee Prince. He's a little bit younger, but he's kind of ageless, actually. But uh, Coffee Prince or Goblin, you will love either of those. And he's in those and he's just a dynamic actor that knows how to bring it on the screen. So those are my two choices that I had <laughs> with Carol like, as we were talking about it. Those are my choices. And then I got to get Carol's choices. Now, Carol's going to gush for sure about her two. And I want you to see them. And we're going to talk about why we're using these particular men in just a second. There's a reason why we chose these men. And I think it's important um, that you understand why. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. I'm just trying to find the picture because it was in front of me. Now it's not. <laughs> you know, it was in front of me. Now it's not. Okay, there it is. So uh, with these beautiful men um, that God made and <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> They're absolutely gorgeous. We want to thank God for making them today. <laughs> So this is Carol's pick. This is Carol's pick. Carol, tell us about this beautiful man right here. He used to be a model. And, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes models and, or even singers, they make terrible actors. He yeah. is a good actor. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's really good. <laughs> and there's a, he always plays arrogant little guy that sort of cold thing but he also he's just so there's when his heart is touched in a drama mm -hmm. and in real life he's got a very wry sense of humor mm -hmm. you know he's very just just so very sort of like cynical way of looking i suspect he'll become a director one day he's yeah. that yeah 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 and then and that was go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you will see him if you want to check him out. He's in um Valid Love or High School King of Savvy. Mm -hmm. Watch K dramas, they don't have as much weird sex and evil stuff as American Western TV. Mm -hmm. And they're really good because they focus a lot on the story and the romanticism. Mm -hmm. But if you watch a lot of K-dramas like me and Carol have, we can tell you the good ones to go toward and the ones to stay away from. So just if you want to have some recommendations, you want to start getting into something different, uh, K-dramas are taking the world by storm. I mean, people, more and more people are consuming them because they're so good. Like Netflix got on the bandwagon, as you know, uh, picking up some of their stuff. They're pure, you know, and there's just, it just doesn't leave you as stressed out as American drama sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And then her other guy that she has here, again, I'm not hiding you because I hate you or anything, but this is the other guy that she has here. And this guy is drop dead gorgeous. And people are laughing at me because they know I like beards, but none of these yeah. men have beards and they're gorgeous. And, you know, talk I'm about this guy here. <laughs> I'm very, I love extremely pretty guys. Mm -hmm. he, what I like about him is there's a woundedness to him and there's also a silliness to him. Yeah. Like he has uh, something wrong with his brain and mm -hmm. pretty much he could drop dead in his head. Mm -hmm. And but he has, he's sort of like he's going to live his life, you know. So, and there's just a, there's a, that sort of undercurrent of, of sadness, and yet there's a sort of playful inner joy that comes up out of him. So yeah. it's an interesting sort of blend, and I just I just love him. I would 
I would want to run off with the first one. This guy, I would just think of as like a, a son or a brother. There's a sweet grief, wounded joy, a sort of treasures of darkness. Mm-hmm. Where because of this, the, his life, there's this joy that comes out of him. Yeah, and I like the way you said that there is that joy that comes out of him. But there is a reason why we were picking some of these men because typically, in My Life Has an Onion, which is available on Amazon.com, in My Life Has an Onion, what's happening is that Carol has created her own K-drama and she makes it to where the Black woman is the center of the story. Because so often, and a lot of people can attest to this, Black women are seen as the lowest that they desire. And I actually saw a study about this. They're talking about singles, and Black women were the least desirable of all the different ethnicities out there, along with Asian men. And mind you, these aren't our words. These are just what they did surveys about, you know. And it kind of makes you feel bad, you know. And then, so in Carol's world, in my life as an onion, she has the black girl who's like me, a little chubby, got a little hip to her, who has these various men, Asian and white and some mixed ethnicities all coming at her. And that's the drama. That's what we like about K-dramas, that fantasy. And this is Carol's multicultural K-drama. So we we weren't just showing you pretty pictures of men who are beautiful. We were showing you the fantasy that uh, some of us have, that Black women can be desirable. That's one thing that we have. We're dealing with a lot of, you know, social issues right now. But the fact that in Carol's book, My Life as an Onion, the Black girl's the pretty girl. She's the one that got the men running for the, running for, you know, running for the hills. Then she has to choose which path, quote unquote, she's going to take with each man. But there's more to it than just that. She also has a spiritual duty as well in my life as an onion. So we just want to share that with you. Share our love for K-dramas. Yeah. Share our love for the book. Make sure you go ahead and get a copy of it. Carol, do you have any last words you want to say, you know, about uh, my life as an onion or anything, anything at all? I have to give Jung Hyun Woo, the last guy we saw, props. Yeah. Because he was in a drama called Flower Boy Ramyeon Shop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is a reverse harem. There's one girl having to choose between these uh, three or these two guys who like her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I gotta, you know, I gotta put him there. And uh, other than that, uh, check out my blog. And uh, you know, peace. Yeah, and you see her information down at the bottom of the screen, just crawling across the screen. So excited. Carol, thank you for being with me on the show. We had such a great time fangirling before the show. We had fangirling after the show, fangirling now, you know. But thank you, Carol, so much. And to the rest of you guys, have a blessed day and God bless. Bye.